Welcome back. According to the nonprofit educational organization Common Sense, today's teenagers are communicating more via social media than face to face. And more of them say that using social media is distracting them from doing schoolwork, affecting their attention span, and even disrupting their sleep. A new documentary from IndieFlix called Like takes a closer look at social media habits and the damage being caused emotionally, socially, and even physically. Please welcome the filmmaker, Sheila Andreen, CEO of IndieFlix, and her son, Ian. Thanks for being here. You guys get to work together as yeah. son and mom team. Thanks for How was us. that, by the way? Uh, it was a great experience. <laughs> learned a lot. What learned else is he going to say? Learned Remember, Mother's Day is not far off. Yeah, so exactly. When mom is happy, everyone's happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. So true. <laughs> yeah. um, Sheila, tell me a little bit about an overview of the documentary. Yeah. But let me say one thing first. Right at the beginning of the film, mm. I was so struck by this. Two billion people mm. using social media every day, checking their phones, is it, 150 times On a day? On average, yeah. On average. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge worldwide thing that we're talking about, yeah. not just our kids, but all of us. I spend a lot of time, time to keep my husband off his phone. Um, so what did you want to explore given the immensity of the use? I think we came to make this film because we wanted to see if it actually had a direct connection into the rise in anxiety and the effects on our mental health. Which we know is happening. Anxiety and depression rates are skyrocketing. Skyrocketing. And, you know, is social media, how big, of, uh, you know, how big does that contribute to this? And, it, you know, it, it, there is a direct correlation. But it's also, it's social media, it's our use of technology. It's the impact on our sleep. We're not getting up. We're not moving around. We're not having this like physical FaceTime, right. uh, which actually has a special, you know, a unique release of chemicals on the brain, which then create a feeling of wellness and, and um, it's preventative. So when we're just doing this, we're kind of in some ways avoiding things and we're, we're not isolating. Doing this. Yeah. Um, Ian, tell me a little bit about how social media is engineered. One of the things I thought was so interesting yeah. about this is that one of the experts pointed out this is not just a consumer product, these platforms. Right. You're the product they're the business yep. and they're making money off your data if yep. you think about it that way why am i getting this ad why is this popping up why do they want me to click on this i think you can get a little bit of mastery over it but tell me how rigged the game is in, in regard of that when these developers engineers kind of first started out uh it was it was for a good cause and we wanted to sh highlight that in the film um but as time goes on and it's all about money uh, it turned into the attention economy. And so what they want to do is take up as much attention as humanly possible. Right. They want to take you away from your life and put them into theirs, right? They want to have your eyes locked onto their screen because that will give them bonuses. A lot of the times it's, uh, their salaries are directly related to you know, time on site. Time on site, you know? So and they know that I'm going to take this quiz. Yeah. That was the other thing that you guys so um, wonderfully portrayed is that the algorithms mm -hmm. get better and better and better at knowing what I will stay yeah. for, what you will stay for, what you will click on. They know so more than you do. They know yeah. more than us. They know things that are su you know kind of subconscious in yeah. our own preferences. Is being aware of that part of the first step in, in disengaging from being so Absolutely. You know, responsive to the clickbait? Yes, absolutely. I think when you take a step back and you reflect and you have time to notice that the colors on the application are, you know, actually they're made to curate so that you are more like hooked, you know, that you get into the app and that you want to stay there. Um, when you realize that this is engineered to keep me away from my, mm -hmm. like, from the life that you live with looking at someone face to face, um, I think that's the first step. And I think that's the best way to kind of start to regulate and have a healthy relationship with Boy, social media. Um, and you, there was an example of that in the film, the way uh, notifications pop up, the way that mm -hmm. the numbers display how many messages you have there in red, for example, which we're yeah. kind of trained to respond to. Yeah. But you can actually go in your settings and change that. There are yeah. lots of things we can do, and the film tells us about that. But uh, let's take a look at a clip. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. I take my phone with me to the bathroom and I connect my phone to my speaker, which I play music on. Go to school, the whole car ride, I'm on my phone. So when I'm on it late at night, I sometimes fall asleep on it and then they have to turn off all the lights and take it from me. In social media, you need to have some thick skin. I think I have an unhealthy relationship with my phone and social media. <laughs> my parents say I'm a bit addicted to it. I use my phone too much. It's, it's become a habit. 
or like muscle memory. We want to have that recognition of people seeing like everything we're doing and we want to have those comments and the likes to like reassure yourself that what you're doing is good. There's a lot of data that show that people get addicted to their phones because the same addiction centers light up as they would if you were using heroin. And also, if you're in love with someone, there's another part of your brain that lights up on an MRI and people have that same part of their brain light up about their phone. What? I love my phone. They, they do, if you look at the brain. First of all, we love Cora, and she's on our she's show great. quite a lot. She's awesome. She's the but best. this is part of the social science that we know, because I think people have kind of blown off these concerns, saying, oh, this is like when we said this or that was harmful to us, when we're blaming everything on social media. If we don't understand the brain science of this, then we're just kind of lemmings for the companies right. that make the apps, yeah. correct? Yeah, I think the brain science actually empowers us to make choice, like we're able to make better choices because we understand, you know, the repercussions. Even we just learned something recently, now that we're starting to do Q&As, it's called text neck. So your, your head weighs 12 pounds and for every inch that you look down, you add another six pounds per inch. It, so by the time you're doing this, sit up while yeah. you're saying your, pound could, your head could weigh 40 pounds and it's putting such a strain That's on something. your neck. That's and I feel like I'm sort of turning into this crustacean that's <laughs> folded around my oh, phone. From it's having such an impact on our right. on our physical health in that way too. The film makes really good points about ways we can do something about this, and I wish we could go through all of them here today, but we are going to list them out for yeah. people because I think you make some wonderful suggestions about how we can take better control. The film is just great. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. A special screening of Like takes place Thursday, May 16th at Fusion Academy in Seattle. The event gets started at 5.30 with a meet and greet for parents, students, experts, and community members. It is followed by the screening at 6.30, and then the evening wraps up with a Q&A with the filmmakers and experts. We've linked all the details you need online. Please go see it.